So what is inventory? We see it on a balance sheet. We talk hear firms talk about uh, selling their inventory, but what, what does that really mean? Well, at its most basic level, it's basically goods we plan to sell. But it's deeper, a little bit deeper than that, because if it's going to be inventory, it can't just be anything that we plan to sell. Uh, it has to be something we plan to sell uh, in the normal course of our business, in the normal course or in our typical operations and, and let me give an example of that so let's say uh, that Walmart so Walmart uh, sells a bathrobe okay they had a bathrobe on their store shelves they sell it uh, that that bathrobe was in their inventory right because that's a normal course of their business is that uh, they're a retailer and they sell things like bathrobes however if Walmart has a piece of land uh, that they're they're just kind of you know sitting on and they're speculating and and uh, or or maybe they plan to build something there and they don't uh, whatever the case they decide they're going to sell this land uh, that's not inventory that's not inventory because that's not Walmart's not in the business of buying and selling land uh, Walmart uh, is in the business of buying and selling bathrobes and soap and food and those types of things. So even though uh, they, they might plan to sell this land, it, it's not inventory uh, because it's not the normal course. It's not, it's not their basic you know, main bread and butter of their, their operations. Uh, so inventory is that the main things that a business uh, sells in order to continue doing business, their main operations. And so I think of, well, how do we value uh, inventory. We change color. How do how do we value inventory? Well, you might have heard of this thing called lower of cost or market, LCM, lower of cost or market. And well, what does that mean? It means that if we t typically we buy inventory, we record it at cost. However, in some cases, uh, something might happen, and the market value of the inventory might go lower than what we actually paid for it. Right, so let's say uh, that that Walmart uh, decides that they're going to sell some computer, and they pay two hundred dollars for that computer. But then that same company comes out with a new type of computer a year later, and now this is really only worth it's really only worth a hundred dollars because customers say, "Well, I'll just buy the new computer for two hundred dollars. Why do I want this old one?" Uh, so really, the market value has declined. And so what the firm is going to do is it would be overstating that inventory uh, if it kept it at just the cost, which was the 200. So they're going to go with the lower of cost or market, which in this case is the market value. And they're going to go ahead and write down the inventory to that lower value. So that's, that's what it means when we say that inventory is uh, on the books at lower cost or market value. Now, when a firm has inventory, uh, they have to make disclosures about something called a cost flow assumption. And that might sound uh, very complex, but it's it's really quite simple, uh, cost flow assumption. And let me just uh, let me give a, an example here, and it'll it'll illustrate it uh, pretty well. So let's say that on January first, uh, the firm buys 100 units of of some widget at two dollars. A unit. Okay, they're going to buy it and they're going to resell it. They're a retailer, um, and then on February first, they buy another 50 units. They still haven't sold anything. They buy another 50 units, but now the price went up. Sometimes prices they go up over time, and uh, so and then March first, they buy another 50 units, and let's say. That that's four dollars a unit that it cost them this time now they go and and now here's the key they sell on let's say let's say june 1st they sell 50 units so now when we when we go to make our income statement we're going to have revenue obviously from these 50 units of whatever the price we got for them uh, but now we have to figure out well what's the cost of these 50 units what is the cost that we assign to that? What's the cost of goods sold? So you might say, well, hey, just whatever those particular units cost. But 
maybe we don't know uh, we don't know which 50 of these because we've got 200 here we've got we've got 200 units and we don't know which 50 it is that we sold maybe it's some uh, product that's just indistinguishable now if if we could distinguish the 50 units and we say you know what no we know for a fact it was 50 of these units then we get to say okay it's it's, it's two dollars a unit that's called specific identification right for maybe a small firm can do something like that or but if we don't know if we can't distinguish then we have to make some kind of assumption some kind of cost flow assumption and and what well what assumptions can we make well uh one is called fifo 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 is basically first in first out that's what it stands for first in first out so the first units that we purchased right so we got all this here and the first ones we purchased chronologically are here january 1st and so we take these 50 units out of that hundred and so then our cost uh, would be this two dollars unit so that's the fifo now we could also make a different assumption and we could say okay well let's let's make an assumption that it's the last goods that came in are going to be the first out lifo so then we say okay well these final 50 units those are the last in and then those that cost that four dollars a unit uh, will 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 be the cost that we choose or we could take something else we could just say let's just add up all the units if we got 200 units let's just add up all the cost right and then we'll just add up the total cost add up the total number of units and just divide the uh the total cost by the number of units and just take the average cost so all three of these are valid inventory cost flow assumptions now it's up to the firm to choose uh, which type of cost flow assumption uh, that it would like to use. It could use you know, FIFO, LIFO, average cost, uh, or if possible, specific identification. Whatever the case, the firm must disclose uh, what type it uses in the financial statements, and it'll show up so that you know when you're looking at the balance sheet and you're comparing two firms, well, does this firm's inventory, is it calculated using FIFO, LIFO, average cost, how is the inventory represented on the balance sheet?